Eight perfect elites beyond perfect. 37 37. It's a dang good score for a run. Purple Lady. Greetings, Jews. I'm in the mood for some revenge on the Spire here. And I see it. I see the revenge visualized before me. It takes the form. Eruption plus. Is eruption turn? This is eruption turn. Good old Watcher. All about swapping back and forth between stances. Dish out massive damage to foes. He's pretty good at it, too. Sometimes. Only if you remove her defense, though. Good jaw worm fight. And a very good first card. Sands of Time says deal 20 damage for 4 energy. But each time this card ends a turn in your hand, decrease its cost by 1. You can also just hard cast it sometimes if we just play it for 4 energy. Sometimes we can end the fight nice and quick like that. Let's take an Empty Mind. Hard Draw plus Stance Exit is a nice little utility combo. This helps us get the Sands of Time into our hand a bit faster, I think. I was learning Watcher when she first came out. It was miserable. Um, Eruption cost two even when upgraded. Vigilance drew cards instead of blocking. And none of her cards had custom art, so it was a literal headache to try to play. But after a few rounds of player feedback, she settled into something a lot more reasonable. And I think a bit overly strong. But that is okay. We all love her. Oh yeah, my title is not right. Wasn't right for the defect runs either. Empty Mind can be energy generation along with the palm cards we have, and that's going to allow us to start to do silly nonsense of the spicy variety. Meditates even better, allowing us to get a card from the discard pile, put it into our hand, and retain it. Particularly like it with Sands of Time, because you can play the Sands of Time and then return it for another discount. Crush Joints is also good to multiply the damage of our next attack. I like the Meditate more. Will there ever be a fifth character? No, the devs are done with Slay the Spire, so there will never be any more official characters for this game. Although modders will continue to add stuff, of course. Sir Penguin! Thanks for the Prime sub. The Penguinius. Yes, yes. Hiya. We know. And one of my favorites, early game, late game, mid game, doesn't matter. Cut through fate. Deals damage. Look at the top two cards of the draw pile and then draw a card. You can discard one or both of the cards you see. So you basically get to choose one of three cards to draw. 
with Cut Through Fate. Although you don't get to know what the bottom card is. Unfortunately, we're facing a plus max health Gremlin Knob as our first opponent here. But fortunately, we're going to slaughter it anyway. Mr. Norbert. And I think I get to play Vigilance here? I have to do quick math. Brings us back to four energy. Yeah, I can play all of this. So yeah, so that's super duper duper lethal. If I use the dupe pot. Is there ever a line where I can kill without the dupe pot? I don't think so. So I'm just going to go Vigilance Strike. Take three here. Yeah, we have to do Pot to kill. Not too bad, considering that was a super-powered Grumlin Knob on floor six. Get plus one strength forevermore, which makes all of our attacks hit even harder. Do I think the devs should have added ways for each character to make curses a benefit, the way Ironclad does? No, I think it'd be cooler if that was a colorless card function that just every character had access to via those colorless cards. I don't think I want any of these, although with plus one strength, flying sleeves is not bad. I'd say we probably already have enough attacks. Watcher doesn't need much. Just Watcher things. Upgrade another card, or take the Warped Tongs, upgrading a random card each turn. Problem is, though, that I have to have a pain in the deck for a long time, so I'm going to upgrade a card. Yet meditate or sands of time. Let's make it sands of time. Make that big slap even harder. I'm going to kill you now. I can meditate eruption. And not and. I can meditate eruption. Cool. And miracles, sands of time, vigilance. Take two. That seems like the simplest play here. Ginger makes us immune to weaken. Blasphemy lets us just kill everything instantly. That's a cool card. Enter Divinity, gaining three energy and dealing triple damage. But die on your next turn. So the idea is you have to play the Blasphemy and then win. We also get a Mummy Hand, encouraging us to take powers. Although I'd say for Watcher, powers are relatively weak. We still want Mental Fortress or Rushdown, perhaps. I really like the Blasphemy with the Sands of Time, because the Sands of Time retains. So it's easier to find together. Time to wake up, Legavulin. Blorp. Blop. 
And that's what uh, Blasphemy can do for us. We can get turn one kills on all sorts of things, including sometimes bosses. We add Mantra the regular style. Yes, we do. Can the death debuff be nullified by artifact? Nope. It's a buff. Enjoy. Oh, we do get a card removed. Good. I want to get rid of defense. And I'm going for the fourth elite, because why wouldn't I? Not the time to play Blasphemy. Oh yeah, uh, Cloak Clasp blocks the remaining four. How nice. Only if I don't play the Strike, though. Maybe... I don't think so. Grab an event. Our rewards aren't that good. Another remove? Perfect. Defense out. On Watcher. There's no need for defense here. Did yeah, we just... Blasphemy? <laughs> <laughs> Sands of time, he dead. Good fight. Get a pretty tiny chest. Offered a tantrum with Vajra, pretty spicy. Although where this, this deck is going, I don't think I want Wrath so much. But I actually don't think I want this tantrum. Normally, normally I'm all about tantrum here. But with Blasphemy Prostrate, I think it's worse than normal. Dex potion's no good. Tantrum does a lot of damage in Divinity. Well, kind of. Let's upgrade this first. All right, Hexaghost. Time for you to be Hexatoast. Just gonna be very careful not to click on Blasphemy here. card. Just biding our time here. This is a really good time to showcase the power of Meditate with the Sands of Time. Play the Sands of Time, and then meditate it back into our hand, getting a discount on the Sands of Time. We can do that again, actually, which I would like to do. Sands of Time... Return the Sands of Time with a discount. And oh, what's that? Ten Mantra, you say? Perfect. GG. Ghost is toast. Ooh, more Mantra? Devotion is very strong here, allowing us to scale. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. Our mantra a lot better, as well as working with the mummified hand. Unfortunately, it's not even close to as good as Scrawl is here, because Scrawl can do everything that Devotion does 
instantly by giving us blasphemy plus a full hand, and then everything is dead. So also it blocks for ten with cloak clasp. Definitely prefer scrawl there. Hmm. Can we take a black star with this deck? Or do I need slaver's color? Kind of like the idea of taking Black Star here and accumulating even more relics. Let's do it. I think it's fun. And I think we've got really good relics so far that should give us an edge in elite fights, especially when combined with our very good cards and our very good money spending. Somebody said two elites max act two. It almost came true, except for this one late elite here. I also owe the chat a dad joke courtesy of Virtual256. Did you hear about the watcher who lost all of her employees because she had greasy hands? She had to let go of her staff. No refunds to shut. Conclude with a plus. Don't think so. Could have had a cool halt plus tantrum build, but we're doing divinity things instead. Hung was hard to handle. Sure was. Divinity in a jar. Unai in a jar. Preserved insect would make. I guess with Black Star, preserved insect is kind of awesome, right? Yeah, we want that. Toolbox is cute, but not as cute as removing a defend and replacing it with another cut through fate. This is the kind of deck I like to have. Damage, damage, divinity, draw, and mantra. Just need one more prostrate, and this deck is really going to pop off. In the good way. Oh, and what's that? We can remove another card. You got it. I'll keep one defend. Let's lose a strike instead. The answer was elegance, of course. And look at this. The more removes you get on a Watcher run, I think the more stable it usually is. Very strong, once there's no longer very many strikes or defends left. Oh, could go here. All right, I'll give Tiny Chest another plus one. Merchant. Do I ever remove Eruption over Strike? Pretty much never. Um, maybe if you're in a really Divinity heavy deck. But you have to be in a very odd state to want to remove Eruption. Things have gotten very strange indeed when you're doing that.
Is three block or five? I can't remember. Five. Good. So cloak, cloak clasp checks after meditate puts the cards in our hand, basically. So we can go eruption, strike, strike, fear no evil, block with prostrate, cloak clasp once again makes up the difference here. Beautiful fight. Explosive potions, probably better than the block potion for the elites here. Especially with reduced health on them. We want something that can just kill gremlins or a slaver quickly. There's the second prostrate. Okay. This is going to get cool. Really cool. Excellent. Look at them. They're so tiny. How adorable. Um, scroll next. I think scroll next. I need to know what my options are here. Yeah. We can go Vigilance into Eruption. Does 10. This does 16. This does 10. We can full block this turn. Excellent. Blasphemy next turn gets me the kill, probably. Although it's not next turn. It's this turn, right? Hmm. Doesn't matter. This does 26 damage. Just cleanly kills you. Did I take three? Or I could try to do something different than that. I guess I could do Fear No Evil Empty Mind, Sands of Time. Arguably, that's better. That's kind of better. Would have been better if I targeted somebody else with the Fear No Evil. But yeah, taking three is fine. Too risky to blasphemy here. Great fight. We only took three damage. We score the Toy Ornithopter, healing us five upon using a potion. Omomori, negating our next two curses. And Wallop, dealing damage and then giving us block equal to the unblocked damage dealt. One of my favorite attack cards on Watcher. This is several good upgrades here. Scrawl is excellent. Blasphemy Retaining is excellent. But I'm going to prioritize one of our two Prostrates here. Because that gives us five Mantra exactly per draw through of the deck. Meaning we can get to ten Mantra much faster with that plus one. Don't like the fat gremlin. Kill that one first. Good beer pot to get the sneaky gremlin? I don't think I want to, though. Will I nearly never upgrade that second prostrate? It has some use as an upgrade, but... Yeah, potentially nearly never. 
Hmm. If I can draw to the... Sands of Time that I think I can kill with Blasphemy here. Because we would go to six energy, right? Seven with the Miracle. This does 81 damage. I'm pretty sure that just kills. Certainly. We get Block Galore, Thread Needle, Four Plated Armor. Boot thingy, 14 armor on turn two. And either a cut through fate plus or another scrawl. I'll take second scrawl, but both of these are awesome. We might upgrade that second prostrate if we wanted to get to 10 mantra in one deck cycle. For example, if I added a prey plus, then I would upgrade the second prostrate. Removal is 100. Might have a hundred. You don't have to go to the shop, but then I don't get to upgrade. Eh. We have a hundred. Good. And I'll take the lantern too. The more cards I remove, the better. I don't think I want to try blasphemy here. There might be a kill on both of them just right away. Not confident enough, though, that there is. I can meditate scrawl if I want to. That's kind of badass. That's more damage. Yes, meditate scrawl, please. Oh, they just didn't attack again. Well, convenient. None of these are a prey plus. So I'm out of here. Please upgrade. Oh, there's so many good upgrades. I'm going to upgrade the scrawls first. The cheaper these are, the more cards we can play in one big, powerful turn. And the better things will be. I'm just here to remove cards. Lita Blade, thanks for the mini raid with your three friends. Joining us for a very divine Watcher run, where we're getting lots of mantra and dealing triple damage pretty often. Welcome, welcome. So now that we've upgraded both, uh, upgraded one of the prostrates, we can do this play both of them, meditate both of them, enter divinity on turn two kind of deal. And the more cards we remove, the more frequently that's going to happen as well. I can discard both of the phases here. Not that that matters particularly. Because those nerds are dead. They're cut through fate. Don't need one. I like the one that said plus earlier. Oh well. Let's just get more relics, eh? So far, the Black Star has not been a problem. The elites have been very easy. This one, probably no exception here. But we get the nasty pattern. Nasty, nasty.
Actually, it might have been a kill there with Blasphemy. With Blasphemy Sands of Time. I didn't even think about that. I was more focused on getting the turn two divinity with this scrawl here. But yeah, there might have been a Blasphemy kill there. We get Duvu Doll with Omamori is a little sad. Start combat with one strength per curse. At least it's another plus one to go with Vajra. Cut through fate. We also upgrade two skills at random. Very likely this hits good things. Scrawl. Excellent. Well, that's what I was going to upgrade. Uh, now we can upgrade the Blasphemy at last. Seems like a reasonable upgrade. I'm also almost down to remove it. Is Duvu better or worse before Ascension 10? Definitely um, worse. Being a guaranteed one is, is really nice. Ideas for a block plan in a run like this. Mental Fortress is going to be a lot of block. Wallop is going to be a lot of block. We can actually block just with Wallops if we get another one and if we can consistently bonk for big damage. Um, we're actually already starting to form a block plan too with the Relics. Cloak Clasp plus Thread Needle plus Horn Cleat counts for quite a bit actually. Talk to the Hand and Mental Fortress are probably the easiest ways to block with a deck like this, but they're far from the only ways. All right, Chump. Chump here should be easy. Very easy. For example, would block 33 here. Oh, I should have shouldn't have scrolled so early. Or I should have scrolled before playing one more card, rather. That's fine. Blasphemy would kill here. Maybe with a Fear Potion. This and this. Blasphemy gets us the final kill. GG. Jump gets dumped. In terms of more unusual ways to do a late game block plan, Spirit Shield can be one of those ways, giving us block per each card in hand. The more cards you can put into your hand, the better a card Spirit Shield is. And with two scrawls and a meditate, it's actually pretty good, so I'll pick this up uh, since we haven't yet formed a decisive answer to the late game. Busted Crown, Coffee Dripper, or Sacred Bark are the boss options. I think Coffee Dripper is extremely free here. We get one energy per turn, desperately needed, in exchange for never resting, which we didn't plan on doing anyway. 
Sir Penguin says, I just won a silent run where I astrolabed a curse to get a better curse for Duvu Doll. First time for everything, I guess. No kidding. It's always cool to see uh, transforming a curse payoff. Fun thing you can do, for example, with Omomori, if you transform a curse when you have Omomori, the Omomori will block the new curse and you effectively remove it. What's my favorite soundtrack and why is it the champ boss music? It would be the champ boss music if it weren't for the heart boss music being even better. I like the heart music extremely, extremely well. And it's one of the reasons I still enjoy the Spire soundtrack almost 8,000 hours in. If I already had two good late game potions at the end of Act 2, would I be more likely to take Sozu or Sacred Bark? I think more likely to take Sozu. Does that work with Necro Curse? No, because you cannot remove Necronomicers. Which means you also cannot transform it. Same with uh, Curse of the Bell. Cannot be removed also means cannot be transformed. Perfect. Tiny chest, go. Can I get a double tiny chest proc? Can we do six? Oh, we can. One, two, three, four, five, six. Tiny chest, freaking go. So we're going to get eight relics from elites, two times four. And we're going to get three relics from treasure chests because we're going to get three chests this act with tiny chest and the normal one. So 11 relics incoming. Relic bar will fill up entirely. Seems good. How many relics do you want? Yes. Wait, double spiker? My spiker solution. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's wallop. Also spirit shield. Wall up mix block, and then we take the return damage, I believe. Correct. Isn't too bad. Worship. Gain five mantra. Yes. I would like to do that. Because that means we're going from two turn divinity to one turn divinity. And we're freaking rich. Can it really be this easy? Why stop at 11 relics? Upgrade two attacks. Upgrade two cut through fates, please. Upgrade two cut through fates. Good enough. No strikes. All these bad runs sacrifice themselves for one really good run. No kidding. Here's another way we can block the late game. The Abacus. Whenever we shuffle the draw pile... Gain six block. The more cards you can draw, the more frequently you can reshuffle, the better that is. I also like Foresight here. We do have Mummy Hand, don't forget. We have not yet played a power this run. I also like Secret Technique, which can fetch Scrawl. Is Pen Nib excessive or fun? It's fun. Maybe a little excessive. But not in a bad way. a strike too. Do I want the smooth stone? It does make the prostrates block for slightly more, so it helps. But it's not huge. But I wasn't planning on going to another shop anyway, so... Sure. We'll take that too. So we buy three relics there. So 14 relics this act. Ludicrous, I say. Just ludicrous.
simply absurd. Okay, that's instant divinity, which makes this wallop slap like a truck. Bonk. Yeah, I like the pendip to go with the wallop to make even more block. Basically. Double scroll, huh? Give me blasphemy next turn. Seems reasonable. Alternately, what if I was divine anyway? Divine anyway. Distill Chaos I'm, with a Blasphemy in the deck? I'm not even going to pick this up. No way. Absolutely no way. For as late game block plan goes, weakening enemies can also help. Sash Whip is not amazing, but it's fine. With an upgrade on it anyway. I will accept a Sash Whip. Yeah, as a reminder, actually, exclamation point, uh, Mayhem Heart, or is it Heart Mayhem? Yeah, there it is, Heart Mayhem. What is the worst that could happen? Reminder, never ask yourself that question. And Nib's ready, you say. Um, which means... Hmm. <laughs> Dead Branch. Whenever you exhaust a card, add a random card to your hands. Don't do a whole lot of that, actually. The Scrawls exhausts. The Blasphemy exhausts. The Secret Technique currently exhausts. Not a lot, though. Could be good, could be bad. Actually, not sure I trust it here. We already are able to get our hand to be full. In fact, after we play Scrawl, it adds a random card to the discard pile. I don't like that. I think I'm going to leave the dead branch on the ground today. This deck doesn't does not need it, quite frankly. Transform a card. Strike. Be gone. You are now... Consecrate. Which is free and does damage to more targets. It's just better. It's just better. It's just way better. All of these, then give me Consecrate Stands of Time. That should kill, actually. Pretty sure that just kills. Bonk. More card draws, great. Omniscience. Choose a card in the draw pile, play it twice, and exhaust it. Or, this is no mental fortress, but with the mummy hand, might be good enough. 
gain four block per scry. Working with the Cutthroat Fates and the Foresight. What is Omniscience going to double? Oh yeah, it's Instant Divinity with Worship. That's pretty good. I do like that. But I do like the Nirvana. I'm going to take the Nirvana here, partially because of the free uh, upgrade. Boat thingy. Boat thingy's pretty good. As a reminder, we do get one more chest. So I can skip this relic, take the blue key here, or skip this blue key, rather. Take it later. Take this relic. I'm going to do that. Turn one block against heart is pretty good. Prevents us from getting bopped by things like this, too, sometimes. good. And here's a second wallop. This should be the last thing we need for our block plan. Two wallops means we draw them pretty reliably. And if we can consistently enter Divinity, then these block a ton. So this will be cool. We get to do this without the aid of Mental Fortress or Talk to the Hand. I quite like that. All the scroll anyway, you got it. You're gonna have a bad time in a second, giant head. Three hundred and nineteen damage. Yes, that's a turn one giant head. This says scry on it. Good enough. Another relic? Not for 400 gold, I won't. And a che treasure chest containing bottled lightning. Could have bottled a scrawl. Oh well. We'll take the blue key because we have to. And fight Reptomancer once again. Gambling chip. We can discard cards on turn one. And Sundial. Every three times we shuffle the draw pile, gain two energy. Working in tandem with the Abacus to reward us for drawing cards. Got lots of relics now. Well into page two here. Get the recall here. Yeah, Blackstar is such a snowball. Even got the tiny chest snowball. Scrawl up deck. Scrawl up. 
Who are you calling a scrawler? back. Oh, I'm guaranteed to go to Vine. Uh, give me Cutthroat Fate plus that as well. Theme is perfect. Wallop and Sash Whip? Yeah, Spirit Shield, Sash Whip. And Sundial value, good. Blasphemy kills next turn. If only these relics weren't uh, set up in this way. Oh well. Let's see if we can reset uh, both of them a little bit here. Punish us somewhat for certain behaviors. Really hard to get set up against this opponent, though not impossible. I'm going to vine right now and play a bunch more cards. Kind of seems like a waste compared to going to vine next turn. Can I play enough cards this turn to make it worth it? I can, yeah. Let's set up for next turn.
Miracle Meditate. Miracle Meditate. can finish off time eater though that's no, not worth it just get ourselves set up here give me sands of time give me worship Ten nib sands of time again here. Success. Although that means winning with both relics on zero, I'm okay with that. Get out of here. To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this mantra? You prime your stick with divine energy, dealing 2912. When was the last time I took damage? No idea. We have so many relics, just so many. Another Nirvana? I don't think I want Weave. This Duplication Potion is probably better than a Bottled Miracle here. You can dupe Nirvana or something. Or something, indeed. I'll lose the defend. No starter cards remain except for Vigilance Eruption. Meticulously purged one at a time. Perfect time for Shard, right? Is it? At least Akabeko does something. The rest, I skip. Can you run out of relics that are shown in the shop? It is possible, although very, very difficult. You'd have to have three or four bars full of relics. If that happens, you'll see a relic appear called the Circlet which is basically a placeholder relic that only appears if there's nothing else the game can generate for you. Cool. So Akabeko Divinity Consecrate deals 45 damage to both of them. And then you die. Then you die. Fine. What happens if you exhaust every card in your hand and deck? Well, then you have nothing left. You can't play any more cards or do much of anything. Think... I think you can see something like this happen in exclamation point empty. I don't I didn't get rid of every card, but I did get rid of all my attack cards at least. So usually you lose is what happens. Inner peace. Cards for nerds. All right. What we have here is a very strong watcher run. That's going to do some nasty stuff to the heart.
So do we do Pot the Nirvana or what? It's our only power, so it's arguably our best dupe here. Let's do it. Could have also duped Foresight, actually. Maybe that was even better. It was not our only power, I just realized. I was lying. Sands of Time Wallop Meditate. Guess I can just Sands of Time Meditate. It's gonna put all of the stinky stuff in the draw pile. Maybe I don't want that. We've got Swift Pomp, we've got Double Cut Through Fate, we'll be fine. Go Sash Whip, actually. I do want to weaken it. But yeah, I draw all five statuses guaranteed because they all go into the draw pile. Actually, wait, no, I discard them all. Get the heck out of here. Dinky statuses. Correct. And I start the turn with 28 block because we are a fair and balanced character. Spirit Shield Wallop Sash Whip should block... Plenty, although that's the wrong order. No, we want to go cut through fate. Wallop, sash whip. That's better. And nib the wallop here. A donk. Weaken you. In some mantra. Oh, and I can meditate. How convenient. Give me back. Rostrate and wallop? Do a double damage wallop? That's okay. Yeah, prostrate wallop. Blanc via bonk. That is unnecessary for no evil. Yeah, Cause now we can go eruption, wallop, fear no evil. Twenty-eight Blanc. Basically full blocking this hit just with the Fearno Evil. Discord burn. Block eight. Feels like a good chance to scrawl. We can do quite a bit of damage. Or apply weaken. Not a bad draw, actually. Hmm. Ross Strength for guaranteed divinity and wallop is block. We'll do that. want to, we can pen nib the wall up for 82 block. A lot of block. I think I will do that, actually. Just because I can. 84, rather. That's even more. Might as well cap damage, too. So it was both excessive and fun. As it should be. 
Okay. Hello. <laughs> no divinity this turn. Kind of sad. Third eye is better blocked than wallop done. I'll take the damage. We actually do get hit for a little bit. I guess I could have just whipped potion there. Would have been the easy answer. Made me bleed my own blood. Nobody does that. Bonk. GG. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.